Paulie Malignaggi, the uh, former world champion boxer, Showtime boxing analyst. As I mentioned, he's been a sparring partner of uh, Conor McGregor. Paulie, kind enough to join me here uh, on the show. Good morning, Paulie. How are you, man? Good morning, Chris. How's it going? I'm good. So, Paulie, I have to shave my head if Conor McGregor wins this fight. Uh, <laughs> you know me. Uh, am I in some trouble here? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I can't make the call like that. You know, I'm, I'm not a psychic guy, but, you know, you. I think you favor Floyd Mayweather, even if uh, Conor McGregor is doing some good things in camp. Okay, so I know that sparring is, is usually sacred, but what can you tell us about how Conor McGregor looks in his first campaign, uh, camp rather, as a uh, boxing uh, uh, spar? Um, you know, he's coming along. You know, he, he works hard every day, so obviously progress will be there. But he's a very dedicated person. Um, can't get into the ins and outs, but of course it's, it's, uh, it's not going to be your typical, as I said, Saturday night uh, during Garcia, after the garcia Brown fight. He's not going to look like Mikey Garcia with all his perfect fundamentals and his perfect hand positioning and his perfect balance. He's, uh, he's going to be a bit, a bit awkward and a bit, uh, you know, a bit, a bit creative, I'll put it that way, you know, as far as what he wants to do and how he wants to do it. And um, we'll see if it works, you know. It's, uh, it's something that he's trying to perfect in camp uh, day in and day out, and uh, we'll see how it, how it comes along on fight night. Paulie, you've uh, you've done my boxing podcast before, and when this fight was announced, you were very much uh, saying that that Mayweather by a landslide, Mayweather is going to is dominate a fight like that. After working in his camp, do you have any different opinion of Conor McGregor? I mean, listen, you still have to favor Floyd Mayweather. It's it's not a very easy fight for Conor. Conor's up against it. But Conor, the opinion I have of Conor is that I see his dedication. I see how hard he's working every day. And uh, I see he's serious about this. You know, he didn't just do this for the payday. I see, I see he's serious about this. He would love to upset everything. He would love to get this win. And it might be a monument, it would be a monumental result for him, you know. So he would he would love nothing more than to do all this. But, of course, it's, uh, you know, you fear Floyd Mayweather, but it's, uh, it's, it's something that Connor relishes. He relishes the challenge, and that's kind of why I said I respect him a little more uh, after being in camp with him. It's you know his, his game face is, is for real. Is there any part of this fight, Paulie, where you say that McGregor has an advantage? Um, the only small advantage you talk about is probably the fact that there's probably things that McGregor does that Mayweather hasn't seen before now. Does that mean they're going to work? No, that doesn't mean necessarily mean they're going to work. I mean, you know, you bring in any guy off the street to box, and he's going to have a different sense of timing, a different rhythm. So obviously, that doesn't mean he's going to be successful. You know, so you know, McGregor's goal here has to be to use the the awkwardness to his advantage in ways that it will actually work against that Mayweather defense, against the Mayweather intelligence, and the Mayweather style. Um, and you know, because he's been a fighter his whole life, McGregor, even if he's not been a boxer, I think he at least has the 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 foundation of know, knowing and understanding certain concepts, even if they're not boxing, and of understanding certain concepts. And if you take those concepts into the, the right situation and, and use a certain amount of awkwardness to get the timing correct, you know, there's could be small issues uh, maybe early on. And then, you know, that's that's all, all a guy like McGregor needs with his punching power is small issues to create into bigger issues if he, if he knows how to translate those into bigger issues. People, so have, people have used, uh, Paulie, Marcos Maidana as kind of a blueprint for Conor McGregor, an unorthodox chopping style. Do you see that as being a blueprint for him? Um. I wouldn't say it's exactly, because again, my Donna was still a guy who'd been in boxing his whole life, you know, uh, I wouldn't say exactly it's like that, you know, uh, but of course, you know, there's definitely some rough stuff in there. I mean, we've, we've boxed and, uh, you know, uh, it's definitely, it get, you know, sort of get rough in there. And, um, you know, the thing about it is though, a lot of things after a few rounds, he's going to have to continue to get creative because, you know, and I don't know that throughout a 12 round fight once Mayweather adjusts how many possible weapons McGregor brings to a boxing ring, you know, that's the only, that would be my only concern really. That would be one of my concerns really for Connor would be, he's got this handful of things that he wants to do, but if there are a few rounds, a good boxer kind of figures them out. So then do you have anything else you can go to? Have you learned enough in boxing in these last few months to go to the plan B, C and D? And that's kind of one of the things that, you know, uh, gets tricky. Joe Cortez, the former referee, he said, I believe yesterday, that things got a little bit rough uh, with you and McGregor. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll be honest. Um, uh, it, it, it was. Uh, it, it got a little rough. It got a little tense. It got a. 
it got the uh, I'd say, you know, dirty, very, very dirty even in, in his spots of sparring. Uh, I don't think he was, uh, you know, he, he brings his game face in, into sparring. Um, he's not very likable. Um, I, I gotta admit, I'm, I'm not very likable either a lot of times in there. <laughs> so, uh, so, so you know, it, it, also there had been words uh, in the media about we'd said about each other before we even came to camp. So I'm sure it all came to a head on in the sparring, and I'm sure it'll come to a head again today in sparring. I'm, I'm not here to be friends with anybody, and um, he's not here to. I've certainly seen the way he's been with his sparring partners. He's definitely not here to be friends with any of his sparring partners. So, so um, by that, by that uh, equation, uh, I, I expect another a good one today. I think the question, Paulie, is that that people have is if it gets away from Conor McGregor, will we see him kind of devolve into an MMA fighter and try some of that stuff? I know there are huge financial penalties if he does, but you mentioned there was some dirty stuff in sparring. Would it surprise you if McGregor went and you know threw threw an elbow at Mayweather, a kick at Mayweather at some point um, during the fight? I wouldn't go that far for a kick or an elbow. Um, I mean, you can sneak in elbows even in a real boxing match. I mean, I, I've I've been hit with elbows from boxers, you know, from in, in boxing matches. There's ways you can sneak those in. I need a kick now so much you can't really sneak those in uh, without getting caught. Um, I don't know. It's kind of up to him to figure out if he knows how to if he knows how to you know get away with those things or whatnot. I, I could see McGregor definitely kind of bend the rules a little bit, but you have to do it within the within the the bounds of a, of a dirty boxer because if you go over the bounds of a dirty boxer, he's outright foul intentionally to the point where it's obvious you're fouling intentionally. He risks such heavy fines; it's not worth it. So, so I think um, I think you, you, you told the line, so to speak, but uh, you told the line with the awkwardness, and you told the line with maybe a little bit of dirty dirty stuff. But uh, you got to make sure that it's within the bounds of boxing; otherwise, uh, he's gonna have a problem. So uh, you're working with him now. How much longer are you gonna spend with him? Um, I assume the rest of camp, you know, uh, I was brought back in yesterday, uh, for, uh, after I was out of work, Garcia Bono last week. So, so I, they, they told me that they're going to need me for a while. So I, I even packed up some suits for a uh, fight week because I'll, you know, I'll be working with Sky and Showtime on fight week. So, so, uh, assuming I'm not leaving back to New York till after the fight. So am I going to have to shave my head? Seriously. I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Chris. Can't put me on the spot like this, but you know, it's, like I said, you, you favor Mayweather and go from there. <laughs> hey, Paulie, uh, good luck out there, man. Always great to catch up with you. Uh, keep up the great work. My pleasure, Chris. I'll see you five weeks. Thank That's you. Paulie Monaji, the uh, former world champion. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.